All right, now joining me in studio is the State Minister for Internal Affairs or Security, Honorable Obiga Kanya. Honorable, we are sure that you were at the scene of crime yesterday until late in the night. Let's start from there. What did you notice or, you know, in terms of you and your portfolio, what have you found out? Well, uh, first of all, I think... Uh, I can't say I noticed much other than the, the grief which people are pouring on the site. But I also noticed the, our security personnel, the joint forces, the police, the CMI, uh, the ISO, and all under the direction of the police, working very hard to try to establish the basis and the people behind this heinous crime. And uh, they're still continuing. This morning, I was, uh, I was there by, s by 7. And so they're continuing. And again, His Excellency the President visited the scene to join the family and address the public in morning, the late. He stayed for about two hours, gave good advice, as usual. And because of the commitment of Abiriga with the community around, the community expressed a strong feeling that they wanted to go to Arua to bury the late Abiriga. And His Excellency the President offered a bus plus what we had, uh, we had already in addition managed to raise. So that's what I noticed, a lot of grief. And our, our security people are firm investigating the matter. We have also learned that you are the chairperson for the committee that is handling and organizing, you know, till the day he will be laid to rest. We would like to know what are the preparations so far? Yes, that's correct. Like my senior, the Minister of Internal Affairs said just a little earlier, quite a bit of the, the framework for the preparations are all over. We have got a program which will run from which ran from last night. The bodies were removed and taken by the police. They've been handled by the police for the investigative issues until later this afternoon. Once they finish, they will hand over to the uh, the A plus funeral service, which will take over. And tomorrow morning, this is an important addition. Between 7 and 8, the body will be removed from wherever it is going to spend the night. We think it should spend the night with the funeral service house. It will be taken to Old Kambala Mosque for a prayer for 30 minutes or so. After which, by 10, we expect the body for the public uh, in, in parliament for the public to pay their respects. And thereafter, it will be moved to the chamber where the members of parliament will pay their last respects. By 3 o'clock, we're arranging to fly the bodies uh, of the two. That is the late Honorable Ibrahim Abiriga and his driver, uh, Congo Saidi. They'll be private Congo Saidi. They'll be flown to Arua where we expect them to spend the night. And on Monday, we'll remove the bodies to Rhino Camp for the final resting place to be buried in Rhino Camp. That is the summary of the arrangement. The biggest challenge, of course, we're facing is there are so many people who would want to travel to reach to bury this man. Mm. We're simply overwhelmed, simply overwhelmed from Kampala, from all over the country. We've tried our best. We've provided some. We're going to provide some vehicles, some lorries. I mean, some buses and some mini buses. But we don't think there'll be enough. That's the biggest challenge. We government, right from the president through member through parliament, has taken over the full responsibility for this burial, and we want to thank government for that purpose. All right, also by your placement as internal uh, uh, affairs 
Minister, mm -hmm. how do you advise, you know, because this trend is probably not a good trend for the country, but how then does the public, because these scenarios create a lot of fear. I know. know. Yeah. How and is the public uh, supposed to handle? And I know, first, the public is right to feel fearful. But we should not give to fear only. Mm. We should join the security people to fight this crime, to make our country secure. Because these people who are committing crime, before they commit the crime, they live with us. After the crime, they are with us. There is no way so many uh, incidents of crime can be committed without the population knowing who has committed. Therefore, my appeal to the public is that by keeping silent, whether that person who has committed the crime is your sister, is your brother, is your father, is your mother, is your uncle, by keeping quiet, you are keeping a snake, which eventually will bite you. So the best way for the public to react, to transfer their anger for this kind of killing, is to come forth, forward and reveal whatever little information they have to the, pub, to the security forces. And the security forces will take up their form. And I can assure you, if we collaborate with our security forces in that manner, we can reduce this security. We may not completely eliminate it because there's no society without insecurity, but we can reduce these things significant, significantly. But the security people alone, without the full cooperation of the population, is going to be difficult. I'm not saying, I'm not blaming the population, but I'm just urging the population. I'm asking all of us to feel the insecurity that it is part and partial of what we must all join hands to fight. Thank you very much, State Minister for Internal Affairs, Obiga Kai.